Hi, in this video I'm going to cover how to use the sumx function. Now the sumx function is one of the DAX functions that's used in PowerPivot and it's considered an iterator function. That means it performs evaluations on a roll by roll basis. So if we wanted to do any calculation here it, and we want to do some like another column for revenue, it's going to calculate price times quantity equals revenue and it's going to do it roll by roll basis. Um, and it only takes about two arguments. First, it's going to look at the table, and then it's going to look at your expression, what kind of evaluation you want to do. So let's go into an example of how we can use the sumx function. I'll take this column of data here, control C to copy, put it in here, control V to paste. Let's make this automatic font color so you can see it better. Turn this into a table, control T to turn that into a table because that will bring it into Power Pivot. Click OK. And now go to the Power Pivot tab and click Add to the Data Model. And once we add it to the Data Model, you'll see that it gives us two panes. I have my measure grid here where I can add my measures, but I kind of like to do it in the window where you can input the measures. So I'm just going to put this as a pivot table already and put it in the existing worksheet and work from there. So I have it in the existing worksheet. I work off of cell H5. Let's do cell H5 here. H5. That's fine. Click OK. And click OK. My pivot table is blank, but I can start to put things in there. But I need to add my measures first. So I'm going to create my measure, which is going to be give my revenue, price times quantity. Under measures, click new measure. The table name is basically where you want to put the measure, and this is uh, table 3. Click OK. It's going to put the measure within table 3. What do we want to call this measure name? I'll just call this revenue. Revenue. And what I want to do is use sum x, and the table name is table 3. Table. I'll just type in the first couple letters. Take table 3, and the expression is going to be price times quantity. So price, I can just use price here, multiply it by quantity, close parentheses, check my formula, there's no errors, and this is going to be a currency, so I will use the dollar sign, two decimal places, click OK, and now I have my revenue, it's automatically added that in there, it's added that into the values field. So let's bring the product in product and then we have our price and then we have our quantity turn this into a better looking table under report layout data design report layout show in tabular form and now I have my price quantity which is my revenue right so if I did here and I did the formula here and did B2 times C2 press enter 4.8 Let's drag this down here. We have 4.8 in that total there. Let's sum it equals sum. And select that. Close parentheses, press enter. That gives our sum here. Now another way that we could have done this is actually putting it in and creating a calculated column instead of a measure. If I went back into Power Pivot and went back into Manage and created a column here, I can also do the same thing. This would equal that times quantity. And it's going to calculate it all. This is a calculated column, not a measure. It's very similar. I'll just call this one revenue calculate column. See, press enter. It's in there. Let's close this. You can see now it's added that in there. So if I bring the revenue down here. It's the same, right? Now you can see that we've got our revenue here, we've got our measure here, and our calculated column. And usually it's probably a better idea to create a measure for that because they do bring the same result. But it's probably a better idea to create a measure because that gets calculated as needed. But this revenue column, it's already calculated and stored in memory. So there's kind of an inefficiency hit when you create a calculated column. So it's usually better to create a measure rather than a calculated column. So that's kind of a, a simple use of the sumx. 
Now if we get to where we want to average things out, you'll see where the power of it comes in a little bit. Let's take this calculated column off. We don't need this for this example here. And I'm going to give an example of an average. So let's put the first cell here. This is going to be the right way to do it, and this is the wrong way to do it. All right, so if we want to find out the average price here, you might think that all I need to do is type average, double click that, and select that, close parentheses, press enter. You may think that's the average price of the items here. And all I need to do is sum this up, press enter, and you may think, oh, that should equal that, but it doesn't. So if I had that times that, it's going to give me a different value, right? So the correct way to get the average price is kind of go backwards, right? We have, because we, we, we have to take into account the quantity. So the quantity stays the same. Sum quantity 422. And this should be that divided by 422, which gives us the correct average price. So how do we do it here? And you might think, okay, this is, if I put the price in, if I had price here in the revenue, and instead of sum, I did average, you may think, oh, that, that would give me this right, this, this value, that this correct value here. And you'll see that it actually doesn't. It gives us that wrong value there. How do we get that right value? Well, there's another way, there's another measure that we need to create for this. I'm going to pull this out, back over here. And what we need to do is create another measure. So I have to create two more measures here. First, I have to sum up the quantity, because I already have a sum for the revenues. So I have to sum up the quantity, and then I have to create a divisor for my averages. So I'll click New Measure. And this will be, we'll call this one Total Quantity. And this is just a sum function. Press tab, and we'll sum up the quantity. Check formula, no errors. Click OK. Now the second function that we want to check a measure that we want to create is the divisor measure. So go under measures, new measure again, and now now we'll call this average price, average price, and this is going to be using the divide function. Divide, press tab. The numerator is going to be our revenue, so let's look at our, let me type table one to find where my revenue is. We're going to have that revenue that we created much earlier, so table three revenue, and the denominator is going to be our total quantity. With the type table, where's my total quantity? It's right down there, that's the summation of it. Close parentheses, check formula, no errors, and this is going to be currency, Click OK, and we have our average price. I'm going to move this over here. And, oh, let me move the revenue down so it kind of is in a better order. So we have our average price, we have our total quantity, and our revenue. So we can see here that our average price here calculated out correctly here. We have our 332, we've got our total quantity is 422, and of course our total price here of 1400. Right, so if I had if I had put this price here and tried to average it, it would give me the wrong one, right? So you can see here the sum x enable us to correctly identify the average price here in this particular setting for our data here. So it's not using the average of this because it's, this did not take into account this value here did not take into account of the quantity. We needed to take into account the quantity first to get our average price for those units. And if we did it in the pivot, we couldn't do it where we brought in the price and used it, the average capability or the average selection in the pivot table. We would had to do it in DAX. So that's another way that the SUMX function helps enable it for us to do something like this. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.